Hi Susan, it's a pleasure to interview you today. We are here in Samstagen at my home place. Uh, I hope you had a good trip here. How was the trip coming here? Perfect, so smoothly. Thank you that I could come here. A nice experiment for us. Yes. First time role chain swapped roles. Yes, exactly. So uh, for me as well, I I hope I uh, I will be a an interviewer as you expected, and my questions will be as you were hoping for. But I'm also here to challenge you a little bit. So yeah, let's start. Yes. Um, and my first question for you would be um, very serious one. What did you have for breakfast today? Oh, easy. I had to get up very early because we had we flew into Zurich at a quarter to seven. So I got up at shortly after four. And I had a beast meat drink. Is that something? Uh, every day I have this. Every day. Yes. So that's something every on a daily day. basis you have yeah. a since beast milk drink. And, since 2000. Okay. Yeah. And so I dissolve, I, I take like in the capsules. Yes. I put it in a whatsoever. I love this with, because it dissolves very easily and it's a little bit of calories yes. and it, and I don't have to eat anything then. And then I had breakfast with you. Yes, exactly. I had my egg and I had my Swiss bread very and nice. good butter. So, uh, well, my second question would be, when do you take beast milk? That means actually mm -hmm. you Every take it morning. always in the morning? I take it, I take it in the morning and I take... Sin since we have the booster and since I found out the, the, about the potential of the booster myself, because it always takes time to find out about the potential of your own product as well, I take it before my morning run. Because usually I go for a run at 6.30 in the morning. And how much do you take? One. One capsule? So, but I don't drink, I, I take one booster. One booster, yeah. yeah. Because I don't take any coffee anymore. Okay. Only today. Yes. Well, you had to because I, I gave you one. <laughs> it's it's, it's you a had coffee, to have, so, one. but this is what I actually do every... If I don't, yeah, I do this every day, actually, yeah. instead of a coffee. Okay. Very nice. So, um, my next question, actually, you know, people normally um, with beast milk, um, it's, it's not a medication, it's a food. Mm -hmm. And uh, why... Can you tell me why do we as humans have to take beast milk when we are healthy? We have, I mean, we don't have to, but we should, because actually we all age and uh, we all get more and more prone to illnesses if we age. I mean, it's not necessary so that we have to develop a tumor or that we have to develop an autoimmune disease or, what's, or whatsoever, uh, but the likelihood increases. So prevention is a very important part in our, should be an important part in our life, which is a difficult story because we don't have a tradition, we don't have a culture of preventing things because, of course, you will never know what would be if I didn't do what, blah, blah, blah. So uh, peace me is really pre acting preventially. I mean, I... Assume that you you know this, taking it now for so many years, and I know it for myself. Well, for myself, I was a person. I didn't in the beginning. I thought it's a good stu it's good stuff when we started in 2000 or in 99 the company. Then 2000, more or less, I thought no, it, I don't need it because I'm healthy. And it took me some time to realize that it helps me a lot in my everyday life concerning my stress exposure or whatsoever, also the susceptibility to infectious diseases. So you get more robust yes. over time. So that actually brings me to my next question. Um, you once said, and I thought that's really interesting, we can't define disease if we have no idea about well-being. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, do we take it when we're healthy? But actually, we are never mm -hmm. really healthy. Is that right? I mean, this is... A very good question and it's really uh, a question that I love and like to stress this because health is a very diffuse thing because 
there are standards from the WHO that relates to lifestyle and how much money you should have and you should have a job and whatsoever. But there's this definition. But for our body, we really don't know because we can feel good or well even if we have a, a, a disease. I mean, if I have... If I'm allergic, for example, I don't have to feel bad all the time. Or if I have a tumor, I can be in a certain balance with myself. So if otherwise people who are suffering from chronic diseases would be permanently uh, uneasy or, un or, let's say, or they wouldn't like to live anymore. Or paraplegic, for example. It's a, for, per, perhaps a good example if you are paralyzed. We, are grow, we often hear, oh, if you're paralyzed or if you're blind, it's not worthwhile to live anymore. But if you talk to these people, they have a very, they, they value their life. So you change your perception, your body perception changes and also your perception of your environment changes. And I think this is uh, very important for us to know that there, will, there is always a life and a, and a, a possibility to feel good about your life, whatever circumstances you are in. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that the problem, like, like we said, you said before, is uh, we react only when we have a problem, but actually we are not taking care. We take it probably too for granted when we're healthy, and, uh, but actually uh, you could feel so healthy for a long time, but uh, maybe you are not. Yeah. So that's where actually Beastman can play a big role. Exactly. In that, exactly, right? exactly, because it's it's. Um, I mean, we live in a in a, in a, we we all live a life, or we always have been leading lives that have been stressful in a certain how. I mean, the definition of stress probably changed, or we invented the term stress or brought it into our lives before you call it, I have nervous issues or I have uh, psychological problems, I, my, I, you know, different neurasthenia. It was not called stress, but nowadays I think with this kind of circumstances, we are all in a situation where we are in danger to develop chronic diseases, chronic illnesses, and this is definitely because our lifestyle has changed and we have been so enthusiastic about modern times about our industrialized technology oh, yeah, life with a lot of technology and comfortability and so on and on the other hand it harms us a lot as well yeah. so let's go a little bit deeper in the in the basement in colostrum um, what convinced you so strongly to dedicate your life for basement as a product I mean, what for me always it's amazing. Um, for example, Mila, she's just born last year, and uh, the first thing she gets from her mother is actually beast milk. Some people, you know, colostrum beast milk, and it's amazing that our circle of life begins with beast milk. And uh, what kind of how how you became so dedicated. Um, to to I mean you must have had into a, 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 a vision yeah a, yeah a, a vision and a, yeah a, um, maybe a moment where when you said this is it yeah it's very, it's it's interesting because I got in touch with colostrum in the late eighties the first time when I was working with a pharmaceutical company and they. Uh, Diluted, uh, they only took the immunoglobulins of colostrum, not the whole substance. And in those days I was taking care of these clinical studies and I was not aware about this at all. I was really ignorant, really. And, if, and um, I forgot about this colostrum completely because this company didn't succeed to, to, to uh, bring it into the market and it was with the clinical studies not not very easy to to see it as a because they saw it as a pharmaceutical it's not a pharmaceutical as a complex substance it's quite difficult to do research on that and um, after several years I think more it, I think 10 years later colostrum be, came up again and in since that time, I already had done a lot of reading and working and scientific uh, 
her reading and about immunology and neuroscience, cognitive science, about complex system and systems. And I was uh, doing um, journals. I mean, I was a freelancer and I was writing articles and I was in contact with many scientists doing compl more complex research on the immune system. Uh, having an, a different uh, view on the immune system, not seeing it as a defense system, but as a regulatory system. So the term regu regulation became more and more, came more and more into my mind. And I thought, my God, yes, I have to look at science and natural science in a different way. This has nothing to do with beast milk. But then um, in the end of the 90s, I mean, I was doing a lot of, it was all project, projects we did, my brother and I, and we had to find the funding and so on. It was difficult to, to... And so we thought it might be useful to have a product or a, something to sell. Yes. And in somehow, my partner Arne, he was always convinced that we should do something with this colostrum. And so we said, we were sitting, sitting in our office and said, OK, let's do it. And we just thought, okay, we just buy colostrum and try to market it. And what convinced you from the product? And like I, was I was, because I was involved in quite some immunoglobulin mm -hmm. work before, I did uh, an immunoglobulin documentary, a world tour, uh, a tour around the world, meeting different scientists who were looking at, the, at these uh, uh, molecules in a different way seeing them as a, regulator, a very important regulatory uh, molecule that the body is staying in a certain kind of balance and that autoimmunity is a, a, a phenomenon that is a part of our healthy uh, immune system, not a disease. So a, a totally different way of looking at things. And this was actually for me some kind of enlightenment of saying, ah, that's it. Therefore... Now I understand. It's all feedback loops. It's circuits. It's it's a it's molecules that communicate cells that communicate among each other. So it's a very different thing in than in, in seeing the body as a as a thing where you have to substitute things and you push things like the like with the brain. The brain is not like the memory is not like bags where you store things and then you have to look for your ah where my memory. So you dig in these containers, yeah. but. It's just actualizing an, uh, in a situation or a stimulus is coming and suddenly things appear. It's like, a, it's like it, yeah, it's reactivating something and it's a, a network of neurons activating that brings up memory. And the same is with the body or the immune system. It's regulation and it's always active and it always tries to keep things in balance and it's always trying to control your 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 whole body because it's it tends to deteriorate i mean entropy is not only in physics a term it's also the body if you don't have control mechanisms you at the end it's dead mm. yeah and this is what i saw then when i when i had this new mindset here it took me quite some the half of my life to get there uh, i, I I understood why colostrum and why it has to be the whole thing and it doesn't make sense to split it into different immunoglobulin cytokines, mm -hmm. lactoferrin, peroxidases or whatsoever. It doesn't make sense. You have to see it as a whole. So um, you're, you are a doctor, your background, you were working, you also told me you were working with cancer patients. I mean, I saw a big chance and I realized that it's very, very difficult to bring it into the medical field because medicine this is quite heretic if I say this like this is uh, has a different mindset up until today they first of all the immune system is is still seen as a defense system tumors are seen as a genetic disease so you kill all the malignant cells and then you think you can cure so they all react when you're sick and not when you're healthy yeah and I think, therefore, we were talking about prevention. I think for tumors, beast milk and nutrition as such is the best prevention besides moving, of course, that sport. And not exaggerating it, but the, the sport that is activating your immunity and not suppressing your immunity. And you know if you do too much, yeah. 
Yes. Triathletes know this very well. Endurance sports can be immunosuppressant and therefore there are also athletes that develop a tu that tumors because of the immune system being so low in their acti activity. And uh, we can counterbalance these things. But, and it's, and, but what is also important is the, the regularity to take it on a regular basis. If you take it occasionally and you have this idea, okay, then I take more, it doesn't work. This is when, like training. You cannot compensate for a day you didn't train. It doesn't make sense to do double the amount if you didn't do it the day before. So do you think now you're, uh, you went this unique way Uh, from doc to, to an entrepreneur mm -hmm. with beast milk and you dedicate your life for it. And do you think that's also the issue of beast milk? Like, well, I'd say the issue, but it's not something you can take today. Do you think that's a problem that people uh, ha don't uh, see it as, as a part of their food or cannot? So it's like uh, when we have breakfast, we have a beast milk with us. So for us, it's normal, but uh, You think uh, it's a problem for, because it's a little takes long term, or yeah, it's actually not that I, long I mean, term. On the one hand, yes. On the other hand, people take so many things they don't feel anything. Exactly. Supplements. There are yeah. I don't know how many supplements in the market, and you don't feel anything. What do you think? Why is um, that? It's, it's. I mean, the the problem with beast milk is it's interesting. I think it's almost some kind of a taboo. For some people, like you have, it's not like with milk that people are, no milk is bad, milk is uh, cow's milk. You have mm -hmm. also people, they, they just uh, uh, disrespect milk that has helped us for, I mean, the cow was our first animal farming animal we had. It's also very much an, a, a thing of education. And I, of course, it's like, I, towards beast milk, I meet a lot of preconceptions. I don't know how it has it to do because it's breast milk. It's so close to the human mm -hmm. body. Is it because it's a taboo and somehow they say, mm, mm -hmm. it's... Because it's the first mm, thing you actually yeah. take. In yeah, the, it's interesting. It's, it's amazing, actually. And, and there, I mean, a baby is, not, is, is probably the most vulnerable feel, thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, you could say, where is it now in our... Yeah food, but uh, actually I think uh, our creator or whoever didn't know that uh, we are such in a stressful life right now and I think we are vulnerable, same as when we were born. I mean, we have, of course, much more chronic diseases nowadays than in the, in the year, in, I mean, 100 or 150 years ago we had infectious diseases, epidemics that killed us. We didn't, we had another, a different lifestyle and we didn't become that old. So we didn't develop, or, I mean, allergies are a different story, but this is a long discourse to talk about allergy and why do we have so many allergic patients nowadays. Autoimmune diseases are the same. I probably, we didn't have the diagnosis, we didn't have the focus on these, these diseases before, and we were not, um, the society was not rich enough to afford certain illnesses. I mean, we are, in a superfluous society nowadays and we can afford to have certain illnesses in one days you just died. The tumor is one thing that is for sure in some, in, is related to age. The older you get, the more likely it becomes that you may develop mm -hmm. a tumor. Um, and their prevention plays an important role. With the other um, chronic diseases we have, I think, um, Our, we have been talking about the gut flora and about the bacteria and viruses we are coexisting or should coexist with, that we are uh, having a balance in our system. I mean, we know that uh, we have, I think, uh, six times more bacteria and viruses in us than uh, body cells. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very important part of us, and it's uh, if this is disturbed, this interaction, um, it causes a lot of troubles, and it starts with the gut in many, many, many ways, and then the outcome is another disease, maybe an uh, autoimmune disease like rheuma, rheumatoid arthritis or multiple, scler multiple sclerosis. All these are diseases where the figures go up, and. Uh, 
I knew from before, from the, from the studies I did with the pharmaceutical companies where you use IVIG or intravenous immunoglobulins, that you can help patients in, for example, multiple sclerosis. So I thought this is the same idea I can apply for beast milk. And, but you use it orally, so it's far better. Mm -hmm. And this was the hypothesis for me. And then we tried and it worked. And it works in those patients. And this encouraged me more and more um, to walk forward. But what is frustrating that you, that this colostrum or beast meat doesn't have a lobby or a... a mm -hmm. Do you think that's actually... It's, it's a very important part because it's not, it, you know, you don't, if you don't read magazines or in whatsoever, in, in see it on the television, you should do this and this and this is part of your, should be part of your nutritional, it should be part of your allergic uh, treatment and so on. So it's just not visible in this world. Mm. And um, therefore I think it's very hard to to convince. And the medic, from the medical side, I mean, I meet many, many physicians, they don't know what it is. They don't know colostrum. Mm. I mean, even gynecologists ask you, then you think, okay, okay. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I haven't met a doctor which they, they rather give you some vitamins or whatever instead of, uh, yeah, I mean, I've yeah. never heard one saying, yeah, you, want, you need some colostrum or uh, something. This is a, uh, is and this has also to do with our, how, how we are educated. And uh, there are people who connect, they immediately understand, and others, no. Oh. And they laugh about it. They think it's ridiculous and it's all a, a big, big fraud or fake. Mm. But there has been results. I mean, there are results. I mean, there. Are lo that's. I I think if if it were not the case, I would have given up. I mean, if I have my ideas, it's something. I have my vision, my ideas. That's okay. But if there is no proof of concept, then I have to say, okay, that's all in my fantasy. But the proof of concept is there. Um, yeah. yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's really interesting. And and my next question is a little bit different. We go a little bit away from the product. It's more to your to your personal side. And uh, I would like to hear from you. Uh, can you describe yourself in three words? In three what words. What is your 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 most powerful? How do you see I love, yourself? I love I love to dig in topics. Yes. I am, my vision is very strong mm -hmm. and I can be, I have a negative uh, experience and I immediately can turn it into positive. That is very powerful, I would say. It's actually what I need as well in my races. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah, it's most important. Otherwise yeah. you cannot, I can get up very fast yeah. and tick things off. Very nice. Um, so to leave the Beastmaker universe, uh, what your take on nutrition in general? Myself, yes. I eat a lot of... I like to cook myself and I cook very puristic. That I, need a lot, I use a lot of herbs, I, need, I use a lot of simple things. I, book, I make uh, like... Um, I, I buy the vegetables and I take the herbs and I buy the meat and I, I try to envision the taste and then I mix things and I'm... Very intuitive. Actually, very successful as I have been <laughs> eating at your place last yeah. year in, in uh, Wiesbaden after the okay, 70.3. Right. But also, I mean, uh, how do you say, see the, um, you know, uh, Dr. Noakes? I don't know, you yeah. know Dr. Noakes? And yes. he has a totally yeah. different approach to nutrition yes, yeah. in yeah. general. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how do you see that uh, moving forward, like in the future? I think we are already in the midst of it, of this change. Mm -hmm. I mean, the carbs are more, get more and more outdated. Yeah. It's still uh, very powerful, but you see the, the food industry tries to slightly push a drift into the direction of fat. They try to get away with it slowly, slowly and put something so they, in. So you try to slowly. You cannot praise one and then praise the other later. I yeah. mean, then you look stupid. Yes, so they try to slowly. Yeah. That people forget about the past and then suddenly this is there and then you accept it and you will not blame anybody. So you would, also, you would say uh, 
like general less carbs more protein more more fat is the way to go or yeah how i is think your this i that? think the um i still have this approach if you are well if you are having a good body perception you will feel what you need mm -hmm. I am against this, you have to do this, you have to yeah, do yeah. carbo loading, you have to. It doesn't mean that you cannot eat spaghetti, potatoes, rice, whatsoever. But I think this kind of, you should, I mean, what I saw in the fridge of, 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 of athletes, the, it's skimmed milk, mm. it's skimmed yogurt, yeah. it's butter that you don't even know what it, what, Margarine is right left of butter in this thing, yeah. even this yeah. spread spread, so that you take dairy products, really good dairy products, full fat, mm -hmm. butter, all these good things, butter. good oils, yeah. olive oil. Don't, I mean, if you can afford it, buy good oil and things like this. I think mm -hmm. this is, it doesn't mean that you have to have uh, fat meat and blah yeah. and all this kind. I think the, 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 which Noakes actually yeah. says. Yeah, you Dr. can. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, uh, but it's not necessary. You don't have to necessarily go this path if yeah, you yeah. don't like it. I know it. what you mean. You have it's... other options, yes. but you shouldn't, because all these, especially dairy products. And Dr. Noakes, when I met him, he had, he had, he told me, oh, I didn't have my breakfast yet, so he had a little piece of butter from the hotel yeah, back yeah. then. <laughs> he ate this thing, yeah. and I thought would not be exactly be my piece yeah, of cake, yeah. but you yeah. see. Uh, how yeah. it has to be enjoyment i mean i like to have a, a, a some top we have top yeah. in switzerland i like to yeah. have some bread in the morning exactly. but uh, maybe you I, i for example take a little more bread a little more uh, um um uh, how do you say um butter yeah. and a little more cheese and then i eat less bread exactly. so i have a mix exactly. of everything exactly um, and i think this is i think this is a trend that we and somehow, ha we, no, I mean, this is still, we are in a niche of athletes yeah. now, but we still have the, the, the huge problem of metabolic syndrome uh, and the after effects of an athlete's career mm -hmm. having so many sugars all the time, hypotonic, sugar, yes. hypertonia, hypertension, um, diabetes, these things. Mm. So we don't have these figures, but I know from Noakes that the figures are relatively high, but nobody wants to have these figures in public because it's not giving a very good picture. So we have to do something. Also with young people, obese, obesity is really still a huge problem with young people having hypertension. And these are sugars and carbs and not fat. Even as athletes, some it's... Too much. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And to be healthy is to eat less. Mm. That's the first thing anti-aging gurus say, less so calories. That, so I come back in the loop to, to Bismuth, actually, because we're talking about nutrition. And uh, I mean, in my the last few years, I have been using the, the booster instead of gels in training rides. Also in races, I have tested it. And actually, you don't need more. It's, it's quite amazing, but it's sometimes you're so stuck with the idea or what other people say that you think, oh, I, I cannot try this, it cannot work. But actually when you try it, I had no, no feeling of hunger. I have no feeling of no, not this carving, mm -hmm. because if you're one starting with yeah. the protein and the, the beta, the, the beast mode booster, it's, it's amazing how your metabolism changes. Yeah, it's calming down your stomach and the gut, that's one thing. And the other thing, it's not uh, burdening your, your organism. It's not a burden to be digested. You know, the, the problem with all the other things, I mean, your body cannot absorb very good. It takes, because metabolic, to do, to metabolize takes energy. So if you are on high gear mm. in, in a race, for if example, you, if then you need energy for digestion, difficult problem, yeah. you know, and we know the problems yeah. when we walk along a course and watch people. Yeah, that but, with, that, and, and, and this, and, and Beast Mich is like, you know, it's, it's, it's like an, 
it's like a safety belt for the cell, mm. for the cell in the gut. And the gut is a central organ beside the brain. And the brain will not work properly and the neuromuscular recruitment will not work properly if your gut is array, in an array. Then you will, the, the disorder is so, this is so strong that it will destroy you. And, the, and what we also know that beast meat, because the immune system and the nervous system are so tightly uh, interacting, of course, beast meat influences also your brain, the status of your brain or your, your, your vigilance. Mm -hmm. It's also used in, in depressive, depressed patients. Therefore, I say beast meat, the booster with the four gram, 4,000 milligram compared to the 900 milligram of the regular one is high dose and it, it works antidepressant per se as well. It's not only the guarana. The focus, we've, before we had the booster, when we had to drive with the car, I took 10 Jews to stay awake, for example. One Jew after the other to stay awake. It has also this kind of effect. Different, not, not stimulating the caffeine receptors, of course, but it's a different stimulation. Mm -hmm. This is more from the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus, that these, these areas presumably also, are influenced. When I heard of a lot of prob um, I talked to a lot of athletes and they, they said always when they felt bad during the race, they just upped the, the carbs intake or the salt intake. It's what you hear only. Oh, you, you had cramps. Oh, yeah, it's the... Mm. I was the same. Yeah, you had cramps and I'm not having cramps anymore. Because you lose coordination and you start stumbling and things like this if, you had not, if your brain is not giving the signals to your muscles or the coordination gets lost. And then, then people think it's a lack of calories. That's but what it's I mean. the hypoglycemia. It's hypoglyc I, I think it's, it's, it's important to prevent hypoglycemia. And the the consequences of hypoglycemia, which is something different to to uh, calories in the sense that you have to have calories for your muscles or whatsoever. You have to have it for your brain, not for your muscles. You don't need that because these muscles run on the fat metabolism anyway in a race. And how how was the feedback from athletes who who used it? I mean, the feedback is very positive. This is amazing. Those who dare to try <laughs> and yeah. are open to try, there is no negative feedback. I mean, honestly, and I see this especially in the and social media. Positive feedback. Yeah, as positive well. feedback, yeah. yeah. And the, the, the amazing thing is that people give you the feedback. Mm -hmm. And for this, I'm very grateful. And this is, uh, this is and also when I have, when there are certain threads on, on, on the social media, the, the discussions are very positive. I mean, there are always those ones who didn't try it who are negative and are destructive, are destructive in, their, in their comments or so. Okay, because they have got these preconceptions and about this, it's only for babies and all this, mm. cr this crap. But uh, the booster for, and especially because the, the, the gut issues are so incredibly high in, 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 in athletes, yes. endurance athletes, it's it's giving you some safety. Mm. Yeah. Um, my next question, also my last question, also is there is a, a big problem. I think overtraining is one of the of the biggest biggest issues for for athletes. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've experienced it myself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't even know about it, mm -hmm. but um, I feel it when I'm lacking motivation, for example. Yeah. And one thing you said, there is no illness without the chronic inflammatory process. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what, what would you recommend an athlete who feels like I'm falling in a, in a, in a hole? Uh, what's, what would you recommend to do? Because I think a lot of athletes, they, yeah, they react not mm -hmm. appropriate. I think the first thing is what you have to learn is to end your recovery. I mean... That means take your time off mm -hmm. without feeling bad. Which is the hardest part. Uh, yeah. And this is what I... I mean, I was talking to Cyril Lindley just two weeks, two, three weeks I'm back from Boulder. So she said it's hard for her. She has to have a, a program for her squat during a recovery. Mm. Because this is more important than training. I think this is the first thing. And then you have to recognize the signs 
early enough, like I said, motivation, Lack mood of, swings. Yeah. I mean, if you get grumpy, yeah. I, I sleep. mean, sleep, sleep, you sleep, sleep. sleep, fractured sleep, you cannot yeah. sleep, the sleep is very superficial. Or you ha you get this kind of you get very sent the temperature fee uh, you are very sensitive yes. either you get hot very yeah. quickly or cold yeah and your appetite some have no appetite others get this craving strong mm. craving for sweets so these are all signs that your balance gets you get shaky mm. and then you have to listen to your body. Because if you're once in this syndrome of overtraining, uh, burnout syndrome, overtraining, it's in the same, it's almost, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's an immune system and an autonomous nervous system that run berserk to get the body back into balance. And this is, to, and it, in vain, you know, this is like a, a gear that is permanently turning, 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 doesn't catch hold of anything. So the, the system runs tired because it cannot cure the problem. Yeah, so if, if you are, and, and you cannot, you, there is no medication, you cannot swallow a pill or yeah. something to, to, to bring, to rebalance the body and to normalize the regulatory processes that have gone out of control. Mm. Because the body is too weak to control balance if you are getting into this situation because it get, it's much more difficult for the body to control the system to overreact than getting into this situation of overreaction because in stress or trauma, in stress situation, the body has to react very fast, yeah. within and seconds, can't. and within seconds, yeah, and then immediately the control mechanism has to, to, to start because otherwise the, the system explodes. That means you are dead in a, yeah. in, in, a condi in a condition of trauma, let's say an accident or whatsoever. Yeah, so I think in the end, uh, people need to learn to, especially us athletes need to learn to listen to our body. I think Bismarck can play a very important role, but if we are not listening to our body, I mean, nothing can help because we, it's, like you said, it's a whole a holistic approach yeah. on everything. I mean, Bismarck can help in so many ways. Yeah. We know that now, but also you as a person need to change because exactly. it's, it's not only what you swallow, it's also how you live every day and how you, how you, how you deal with your problems and, and your, yeah, your... And I think this is what you said, it's... Amazing how little athletes know the signs the body sends to them, how to interpret these signs. And no technical device will help you to do so. And no doctor can help you to, because only you feel yourself, nobody else. Hey, if I talk with these successful athletes, all of them, like Sebi, mm -hmm. also um, yeah, different ones, Chris was one, I mean, they have something naturally where they know when they stop and actually they don't have a bad feeling about exactly. it. They can exactly. say, hey, I'm tired today. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people, sports people, mm -hmm. uh, um, also age group athletes, they don't, they see that as a weakness, but actually it's their strong point. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that's their strong point. Yeah, and, and th but they, they also don't believe it sometimes, mm -hmm. I think, that they do that. They only see the, the, the hard intervals mm -hmm. Sebi does, mm -hmm. the, the long rides he does, mm -hmm. or, or I do. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, we get stronger when we rest. But it was a pleasure to, was, uh, to, uh, to be able to ask you Thank some you. questions. I Thank hope. you, it was perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for all your loyalty to so many years. Eight years, I think it's now. So now I get Mila, because yeah. now she can yeah. go crying again. Huh? Yeah.